American narrative, you know, which was this notion that no matter what your circumstances, no matter what your situation today, if you come to America, there's an opportunity to do amazing things, to achieve things you would have never thought possible. But it's not guaranteed. <laughs> you gotta come. It's a call to action. You gotta come to America to do this. And I think similarly, Silicon Valley has a narrative that has been very powerful in terms of driving its continued success over time, which is, you know, we've got a, gen a, a new generation of digital technology out there that has the potential to change the world, to do amazing things. But it's only a potential. It's not guaranteed. Are you willing to come and help change the world? Really energizing opportunity-based narrative that I think explains why so many people from so many different parts of the world came to Silicon Valley and still come to Silicon Valley. That narrative has drawn them. Um, so I think if, if you focus on opportunity-based narratives and tie it back to this notion of the passion of the explorer, really interesting kind of, of mapping here, which is an opportunity-based narrative defines a domain, it defines an opportunity that's long-term. It's not tomorrow, it's over decades ahead. Um, and it's worth committing to because of that opportunity. It's so big and there's an opportunity to really make a difference here. And so it overcomes that, that tendency in terms of the cognitive biases to shrink time horizons. It says no. There's actually a big opportunity, and yeah, there are risks, there are challenges in addressing this, this opportunity, but it's worth it. The opportunity is so big, so it discounts the risk, magnifies the perception of reward. And then it fosters the questing disposition, right? A, an effective narrative doesn't, again, it doesn't say the opportunity is guaranteed. It says actually there are a lot of obstacles and challenges along the way that are gonna to have to be addressed in order to realize this opportunity. But again, it's worth it. It's exciting to be able to address those challenges because it'll get us closer to that opportunity that's out there. And then you can think about the connecting disposition. A narrative brings people together. It says, actually, there's an opportunity we can all benefit from. It's not we, you or me, it's us together and will actually create a much bigger opportunity if we come together. So it builds more trust, it builds more of a, what the economists call a positive sum view of the world, that actually the, the rewards are gonna get bigger the more people that, that join forces to, to target this <coughs> opportunity. So I think, again, it's a really interesting kind of counter to the, um, to the cognitive biases that we tend to face in times of mounting pressure and unleashes passion. The passion of the explorer brings it out, and fosters it, nurtures it, amplifies it. And so I think for that reason, I've, I've ended up spending quite a bit of time trying to understand how narratives evolve and emerge. And you can think about narratives at multiple levels. So um, <clears throat> I, I've talked about uh, narratives at an individual level. I think we all, in our lives have a narrative that we've been living. We, very few of us, I think, have stepped back and made it explicit. But if you look at the choices and actions we've taken throughout our lives, critical decision points in our lives, there's a narrative that has shaped those choices. And I think there's a lot of value in, in just making that explicit and trying to assess how some narratives are not very uh, effective. Other narratives are, are very powerful. And you know, do we have a narrative that's really working for us? I think there are institutional narratives. I think companies and organizations can have a narrative. I think actually very few do. Um, I, I joke that when I talk to executives about the concept of narrative, they say, oh, we have a narrative. You know, we started in the garage or a living room. Uh, we faced enormous obstacles and challenges, and we overcame them, and we accomplished amazing things. 
and it's open-ended because there's a lot more to be accomplished. And I said, well, wait a minute, you know, yeah, that's open-ended, but it's a narrative about you. It's not a call to action for others. What are you asking other people to do other than buy your product or sit there in awe at all the amazing things you've done? But it, it, there's no explicit what's in it for the, the people you're trying to address in terms of why they should be mobilizing to, to address this opportunity. And I think one of the few examples I've been able to find, and again, I <clears throat> welcome the, the discussion around this, of a successful corporate narrative is, uh, in effect, what Apple had in the early days and has driven, I think, a lot of its success. And they've shrunk the narrative into the uh, slogan, Think Different. But if you unpack that slogan, basically the narrative was, you know, for, gen for decades we had digital technology that forced us into these boxes, gave us numbers, and wanted us all to be cogs in a machine. Now, for the first time, we have a set of technology that's going to allow us to express our unique individuality and potential. But it's not guaranteed. You gotta think different. Are you ready to think different? Are you willing to think different? Because that's gonna determine the outcome here as to whether this technology achieves its potential. And I think that's one of the reasons that Apple, for many, has become, in effect, a religion. It's a, a religious narrative, if you will. Um, so I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of power in institutional narratives. Um, and then there's social narratives. I think a lot of the religions throughout history that have been successful have had a powerful narrative. Um, regions, countries, talked about the American narrative, the Silicon Valley narrative. I think there are, there are narratives that, at a social level that have played a significant role throughout history. And so there's a real question in terms of reflecting on alignment of narratives, right? Because I, I think there's an interesting exercise, first of all, in stepping back and just reflecting on our own narrative and as an individual and what, what is our narrative. What, and, and in that context, what's our call to action for other people? What are we asking other people to do with us or for us? Or what's the opportunity for them uh, that, that's driving our, our lives? Um, but then I think there's an interesting question of, is your personal narrative, is your individual narrative consistent with the institutions that you're part of or the regions or society or community that you're part of. Um, and in many cases, I think there's a pretty significant friction or disconnect between the individual narratives that we're trying to pursue and the institutions we're part of or the societies and communities that we're part of. And I think there's an opportunity to reflect about, you know, do I need to change the institution I'm working with? Do I need to even move to a different city or a different region because there's a narrative that's much more compatible with and reinforcing of my personal narrative, my individual narrative? Um, so I think it can be a very powerful way to reflect on what kind of impact you want to achieve and how to get alignment across these different types of narratives. Um, in, in magnifying the impact of your efforts. So it's, um, just checking to see what I've left out here. I, I, I just, I guess I would say at the end of the day, I, I started with this notion of mounting pressure, um, which again, I think is a reality. It's what I call the dark side of technology. Uh, and I don't think enough of us, particularly here in, in the Bay Area, acknowledge the dark side. We tend to focus on all the incredible things that this technology can do and the opportunities it creates. And God knows, I, you know, I've been here 35 years and certainly one of the reasons I came here was because of the opportunities that this technology creates. But I, I believe we need to understand the pressure that it also creates and figure out how we're going to operate in that kind of environment. And I think if we find a way to tap into passion, to connect to our own individual passion, and find a way through narrative to amplify and nurture that, 
um, we have an opportunity to change pressure into opportunity that is actually quite exponential in, in terms of its impact and where ultimately very small moves smartly made can set very big things in motion but it requires passion and I think it requires narrative to, to really make that transition so I've talked long enough let me open it up to conversation <laughs>